All right, just a reminder for everyone who is here, we are recording this session. So keep that in mind. Feel free to use the chat or the Q&A if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or anything you want to share. And welcome everyone to Collegiate Conversations presented by the American Marketing Association Pittsburgh chapter and sponsored by the Roland School of Business at Point Park University. The American Marketing Association Pittsburgh chapter is the essential community for marketers in the region. No other organization provides more ways for marketers and academics to connect with people and the resources they need to be successful. And you can learn more at amapittsburgh.org. So we hope you'll visit the website, check out the organization and consider joining us. Today's amazing event is all about virtual networking. We are so excited to have Dr. John Rindy here with us. Dr. Rindy is, uh, he likes to go by the bald career guy. And I think that's how he's known on Slippery Rock's campus. He does run career services for Slippery Rock University. And he believes strongly in the value of networking and has some personal anecdotes along with some training to share. So as we get started with today's session, this really has two parts. The first part is going to be Dr. Rindy sharing his wealth of knowledge on how to network and why to network. And then what we'll be doing is moving into breakout rooms with American Marketing Association marketing professionals who will walk you through the practice of networking and work on conversations and, and communication skills with you in those breakout rooms. So a really fun session today. We're going to learn it, we're going to do it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rindy. Well, thanks a bunch, Doreen. I appreciate it. Thank you to, uh, to you and to Ashley and to Nan for not only inviting me, but keeping me updated on changes and links and everything else. So I really appreciate that. Nice to meet you all. And uh, my, my favorite thing would be to go around and have everybody introduce themselves and then tell me what you're doing on your winter break. Uh, but we don't have a lot of time for that, right? Because you want to do some breakout sessions in a little bit, and maybe try some questions. And I'm going to provide some questions and maybe discuss during those uh, those breakouts. But uh, I wanted to come clean. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and, and I'm actually going to share a copy of a book here. Uh, I, I want to come clean that uh, I and uh, Dr. Nichols. I've been in front of Dr. Nichols and Dr. Vitus class before, and uh, they they um, they can attest that I rarely go unheard. <laughs> <laughs> and I rarely run out of things to say. So we're going to keep this to half an hour. I promise. I promise. But uh, I, I don't know if I'd love to hear myself talk or what. No, in real, in reality, uh, despite the fact, uh, and I'm speaking mostly to, to, the, to students, the students, because I, I think some of the professors and professionals in the room understand this, that uh, I'm actually not an extrovert. Uh, I'm going to a networking event in a little bit here, and there'll be a number of people in the room. And I'll have to leave every now and then to to collect myself. And yet uh, over time, by pushing myself a little bit, a little bit more and a little bit more, I've gotten good at, at, at writing connections on LinkedIn. I've gotten good at standing in front of a group of 30, then, then 50, then 300, then a thousand people and speaking. Uh, I happen to be a professional musician. So I've played in front of pretty big crowds as well. I've opened up for some really great acts. Uh, I've played with Kansas. I've played with the Commodores. I've played, played with Bobby Blue Bland, Ray Charles. So I've been on stage with some really great people. And yet I, I'm I'm not an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. I'm in the middle. I'm called I'm what's called an ambivert. So I sit right on that on that line where I need to retreat to my quiet space to do my work. I really do. And big networking events in person where everybody hangs around the bar because that's where all the people go. That's where all the networking and the fist bumping and the elbow bumping is. That drives me nuts. So um, if you look at, uh, I think I'm sharing my, am I sharing my screen now? Everybody, can you see what I'm sharing? book called you quiet sharing all right great and it usually outlines the thing but it's not outlining it lining it in green like it usually does yeah so this is a great book that we have encouraged for many years that our team in the office of career education and development at slippery rock to read we ask our gas to read it we have a team of about 11 career coaches at, uh, at slippery rock and when you have a, a four-year career model like we do you get a lot of traffic so we see three to four three thousand to four thousand students a year i actually am the former director i now oversee several offices but I'm very connected to the uh, career office. But this is a book that we real one of several books we ask our folks to read. Susan Kane is an attorney. She is a self-professed introvert. That also represents about 40% of the uh, of the uh, US 
So uh, about four in 10 people would identify as introverts, probably six in 10 as, uh, as extra, extroverts. And then there is a small percentage. If you know what an ambivert is, you'd realize you're probably an amb ambivert if you sit on that uh, that line. The reason I mentioned that to get started, and, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, let's see, I'll just start this, uh, this slide presentation, is because there's this mis misperception that somehow, um, you know, that it, that networking is only for the extrovert, you know, that, but, but it's not true. And in fact, in the virtual network, in the virtual environment, there's some advantages, particularly for, for really for everybody, the extrovert who wants to meet tons of people, as well as somebody who is a little quiet. I never want to hear anybody say that I'm shy. Uh, shy is not, shy is different from an introvert. Shy is, is something that you, you might need to go get treated for, <laughs> whereas introvert is quiet. And Dr. And, uh, Attorney Kane makes a great point in the book that, that you're just quiet. You need to retreat to your quiet space. You live in your mind. When other people are doing this, you tend to be listening. And so sometimes extroverts misinterpret introverts at not, as not liking them, when in reality, they're doing something that we Americans are not particularly good at doing, and that's listening. Uh, and um, we're not good with silence. Introverts are actually usually pretty good with science, and it's kind of a shame. So if you happen to be on the introvert side of the Myers-Briggs, you're in good shape in the online environment because, because you don't have to wait for some big networking event. You don't have to wait for some job fair to come along. You can network when you're ready to do it with that one-on-one -on -one kindred spirit get to know you more deeply because I know sometimes introverts tell me I get very nervous with the, with the small talk. So when you do in your, when you get into your breakout sessions, I try to come up with four questions or four topical discussion areas that might generate less small talk, but more help and support among one another. So let's get started. This is one of my favorite guys of all time. And I, I don't know if anybody in the room has ever hold, heard of Dr. John Crumble. It's sort of like, hey, bald guy, shame on you for starting with theory. Who starts a presentation like this by forcing students and professors who sat in classrooms all day to have to listen to yet another theory? Dr. John Crumble is the author uh, and and the founder of the theory of plan happenstance or happenstance learning theory. Now, when we go to, when we go to high school and we're in middle school, we hear things like, what, what are you going to be? What, what would you like to do? What classes did you like? And, and yet, and yet the average high school senior graduates from high school aware of less than 2% of the 30,000 sub occupations that exist. And then we ask you, what are you going to be? And why can't you tell me? And what are you going to major? And then we wonder why seven out of 10 college students change their major na nationwide. Are we starting to see the problem here? Dr. Crumble said, no, that's all wrong. And high school still aren't listening, but hopefully they'll listen soon. Dr. Crumble said, no, no, no. The goal of career coaching is, and this ties directly into networking, by the way, goal number one is to achieve a satisfying career in personal life. Well, wait a minute. I thought I was supposed to make money. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be called doctor so people are impressed. No, no. He makes the point that it's about joy. What students, what makes you joyful? What make, gives you energy? When you know things about yourself like this, what skills you bring to the table, what connections you could share, now you're becoming a great connector too. But until you actually do some self-thought, some mindfulness and understand what you actually, you know, the second to the last question in a job interview is, why should I hire you? Oh, that means why should I hire you and not the other three people who just told me I'm a papal person and I work well with others and I'm a team player. You know, that recruiter heard that, that same response 50 times today alone. No, seriously, what do you bring to the table? Because when you finally do come to the table, whether it's virtual or in person, you can have a conversation because you know what you bring and you also know your goals and what you'd like to achieve. So Dr. John, John Crumple says it's about a satisfying career in life. Number two, you should use self-knowledge as a roadmap. Whether you take a career assessment, whether you take a strengths finder, that is stuff that, that helps you determine the direction you're going and the network you should be building to help you get to where you want to go. But along the way, the idea of, of networking or connecting is that I would be equally willing to help you as I hope you are to help me. That is the point of LinkedIn, for example. I'll open up my LinkedIn in a second. When you say yes to connecting on LinkedIn, what you're actually saying is I would be equally willing to support your goals as I hope you are to support mine. And I know students that the feeling is, and I'm sorry, I'm constantly directing to the students. It's just my life. It's my paradigm. Uh, but, and, and, and for the, for the professionals in the room as well, 
um, it's easy to think, no, no, it's, I need to achieve something. I need to achieve it fast. I just got to go find a job or I just got to go find a connection that has this answer. And sure, sometimes life is like that, but we should have probably started a lot longer ago building that network. So we already have that board of advisors we can turn to. And that's a point I'm going to make. Goal three, use, uh, this one is so important. Use action to create beneficial unplanned events. Let me tell you about an unplanned event, everybody. Uh, I was um, getting ready to accept a job delivering pizza and living in a fraternity house when my sister called me and said, hey, this laboratory I work at, they need somebody to drive around and pick up blood samples. I'm like, well, I'm going to be delivering pizza, so I don't know. And ended up going, interviewing. Actually, my friend had to drive me to the interview. I was, I was about 18 at the time because I didn't have a car. I ended up getting the job I ended up working there 12 years and had four promotions, company, car, great benefits and everything because I said yes to an unplanned event. But it was because I said yes that I bumped into all kinds of people like Tony Nazarella, my first mentor ever who had a PhD. And here I am many moons later with my own doctoral degree because I, I was surrounded by people who I saw did achieve that. So, so most of our life is happenstance. The U.S. Census will tell you that only 27% of Americans work in a job that is related, remotely related to their undergraduate degree, only 27%. Why? Because they couldn't find a job in their field? No, because they ran into other opportunities. They talked to other people who said, you know, I see something in you. Why don't you come work for me? Why don't you consider doing this? Because you're so skillful in this. And they did. 73% of us did. Like the guy who has a business degree and an environmental science degree and a public health degree. And now I'm giving you a talk on networking. Come on. Happenstance pulls you in those directions. And last but not least, we measure success by the fruits our actions produce. Do we move toward our goals by what we accomplish, not in the classroom, but outside that classroom co-curricularly and the people we're meeting in AMA. So. There we go. Uh, this is Donald Robinson. Donald Robinson is a graduate of Slippy Rock, and I had lunch with him a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him all kinds of questions. You know, um, at, at, all, at most institutions, there is a bit, about a 20% disparity in the graduation rates of Caucasian students to African-American students. You look at almost any school, and there's at least a 5 to 20, maybe 20, 25, 30% disparity difference. And I and what, the conversation inevitably turned to, hey, uh, hey Donald, what, what was different for you? And he said, I, I built my team of experts. And I said, yeah, you came in to see me a lot. I mean, we talked about, hey, you know, someday, uh, Dr. Rindy, I think I want to start my own athletic shoe company. And we talked about what it would take to get into Nike and work, you know. Uh, the guy ended up going to the University of Texas, got his uh, master's in kinesiology, and he opened up his own business, Global Human Performance, there in Pittsburgh, where he trains uh, uh, elite athletes. I love this phrase. There is no honor in doing it alone. You were always taught to bootstrap and, and do it on your own. You know, we did a survey here recently. It's called the Lassie Survey, Learning and Study Strategies uh, Inventory. We did it here at Slippery Rock with our incoming students. And you know what we found is that our students, although very high achieving at Slippery Rock, are in the 40th percentile for using academic resources. 40th percentile. We wonder why sometimes the tutorial center is, 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 is empty. Folks, we can't do it alone. We need people. And Dr. Nichols knows what I'm going to say. You're either networking or you're not working. We need people. This thing is not going to hire you. This thing is never going to tell you you're hired. We spend all day on this thing, and yet the answers to all of our questions are with our professors and the professionals that are in this room or out there. There's over 320 million people out there. That's where the answers lie. We need to tap into that. I mean, like I could introduce you to Jonathan Radke. Jonathan Radke is a, a Slippery Rock alum, and he is one of the general managers for the Washington football team. But you're not going to meet John Radke, as I say, Dan Air at the Giant Eagle and Ad. You know, you're going to have to connect with him some other way. And it's virtual. Virtual is the way you're going to do it. Talk about some other. I, I love just giving quick, quick, some quick vignettes. Um, talk about. <laughs> Yeah, talk about happenstance. My son came to Slipper. My son Luke's on the left. My daughter Jenna's on the right. Luke came to Slipper Rock to study languages and become uh, an FBI agent. Jenna came to Slipper Rock because she wanted to be a corporate writer and a public relations uh, expert. But uh, somewhere along the line, I introduced Luke to uh, uh, John Voikalevitz at LECOM at Lake Erie College of Medicine, and they got they struck up a conversation. And he is now chief radiology res resident in Miami, Florida, and he's about to start an abdominal subspecialty at UPMC. Um, my daughter Jenna 
the you know the corporate writer yet yeah, she's completing her phd at boston in chip off the old block environmental science so she's hoping to come back to the rock someday and be a professor but it was all by happenstance see jenna met julie snow one of our professors julie snow is a climatologist who now is fellowshipping with the uh, military and she said hey i heard about this fellowship and research assistantship at the university of north texas jenna went there applied got in free master's degree right ended up published with, with her mentor down there, Dr. Gonzalez. And Dr. Gonzalez says, hey, I heard about this doctoral program at Boston University. Let me introduce you. Now she's got a free doctoral degree. You see how this works, everybody? You got to know people. It's people have those answers. So I'm just trying to make them, you know, a Simon Sinek wrote the book, Start With Why. Hopefully everybody's seeing the why here. We need people. We can't do it alone. Here's some online networking success. Uh, just some of our students. I won't go into each one of them, but Dominique Jeremko is a perfect example who came into my office one week before graduation saying, I don't have a resume and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm graduating in psych, but I don't want to go to grad school. Uh, we got her into a third party recruiter. She started doing staffing work and now she's human capital. This is like just three or four years later. She's human capital management at ADP and she'll be coming back here for our career fair hiring our students. Why? Because she stepped forward and said, I need help what advice do you have for me? She just said, yeah. And then I connected her online with Paige Bruce, who's a, who's a Duquesne grad, but recruits here heavily to be recruiters at um, at Aerotech, which is where she actually started. Uh, Habiba do what do, and I'm going to have to get on her case because she didn't change her LinkedIn. She's actually a chemist. Now, here's an international student who, uh, you know, it's very hard for internationals to stay in the United States when they graduate here. They're, she's on what's called OPT, Optional Practical Training as a STEM student. She can stay here for three years before she gets sent back unless somebody will sponsor her in an H-1B. Boy, was she panicking because she came last minute. She's working for Eurofins Analytics Political now, you know, eventually she'll be a developmental chemist, probably in the biopharma uh, in the biopharma region uh, area. Ryan Nusifora, great guy, exercise science, three plus two, one of the very few who actually make it through that. And he went into DPT, got his physical therapy, doctor of physical therapy, and went out there about two years and said, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. So how about that? Going through that really rigorous program. Dr. Rindy, I wonder why it was on my schedule. Dr. Rindy, can you help me? Sure. Made a couple connections. I said, well, you, what do you want to do? Well, yeah, I'm getting my MBA at Villanova. Great. Connected them online, met some people in uh, medical sales, working for Stryker. So all done virtually, but because somebody stepped forward and said, I need a little bit of help. You know, Keith Ferrazzi is a Western Pennsylvania guy. Um, raise your hand or wave your hand if you ever heard of Keith Ferrazzi. Ah, nobody heard of Keith Ferrazzi. Ferrazzi grew up down in Youngstown. Pennsylvania near Latrobe, and he uh, uh, came very meager means. His family very meager means. He became a caddy at one of the uh, golf clubs down there. He got the caddy for Arnie Palmer once, and then uh, and then a lot of the folks who go to that golf club started asking for him a a as a caddy because he was a good conversationalist, and he would go out and walk the greens the night before and see what advice he'd want to give to his clients. So he started being a highly requested caddy. Well. Uh, you know, just fast forward, he is now like a, a capital vent, uh, venture capitalist and uh, multimillionaire, uh, wrote a couple of great books. Some of the advice he gives is, you know, we are made up of thousands of others. I love saying that, hearing that we are made up of thousands of others. Don't go it alone. Ask for generosity. I have a lot of people say to me, John, what, what advice do you have for this? And I said, well, you know, let me just give you a whole list of contact. Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to go through all that. I want to give you all that. So, so ask for generosity because people tend to be generous and then be willing to accept that generosity. He also says, remember, chances come out of nowhere. And I think Dr. Crumble says the same thing, happenstance. As we're walking around, we run into people who can help us. Also, relationships are not finite. People who, you know, I, I'm not... I'm going to call in this chip someday. So I'm not going to give you this contact here. I want to call in this chip someday. No, relationships are not finite. If you're a true networker, you will help anybody and they will never wear out. They're welcome with you. So remember, when you're adding somebody, you're also saying, I will help you if you always help, help me. Here's the advice I give everybody. Build and maintain your network. You know, and then the worst thing I see is people come in here and we build a LinkedIn profile. They build this great network and then suddenly... Yeah, they let it go. I got a job. Hey, that's great. Okay, what about five years from now when somebody walks in and says to you, oh, yeah, we're closing the company and you're one of the people losing your jobs. Well, who are you going to call? Well, you should have an emergency 10 list. The emergency 10 list are the first 10 people you would call who would say, Nan, you're hired. 
No, no, not a crying shoulder, not somebody to give advice. Everybody, you need 10 people who would hire you tomorrow. Now think about it. Once you have a house and a car and soccer payments for the kids and direct TV and all these bills, would you rather be the person who's calling a friend saying, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to make these payments? Oh, this is terrible. Or would you rather be the person to say, this is cool. I got 10 people who would hire me tomorrow. You see, that's not up to me. Mine is up to me. Doreen's is up to Doreen's. Ashley's is up to Ashley's. So once you graduate from high school or if the professionals, the professionals that are out there working already, it's up to us to maintain those networks. And finally, as Donald Robinson said, have a board of advisors. Always have a board of advisors, people you can always go to for advice on different things. Hey, let's just uh, just give you a couple quick tools here. Uh, and let's see which screen I got there. So let's go to LinkedIn, just to show you a couple of things you may not have known about LinkedIn. All right, let's bring up that handsome devil. There he is. Hey, uh, so if you care to, if you have a one or two questions about LinkedIn, can it do this? Does it do this? How do you do this? Let me hear it from, do you anybody have a particular question about LinkedIn? I've always wondered if it does this. Anybody, anything off the top of your heads? And feel free to put it into the chat if you that have too. a question. That would be a great way to get it to Dr. Rindy. You have the expert here now, so take advantage of his time. Seeing none, let me do a couple of quick things that you may not have known existed. So um, Nan, what other universities do we have represented here? Um, actually, I mean, the whole region was invited, but I know that there, Doreen has some students that, that she said that, that they're, and then we have Slippery Rock students, and, okay. and I haven't looked at the list recently. So Point Park, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to Point Park University. And here we are on Point Park's page. We're going to click on it. It's going to take us directly to their page. And my question that I'm going to try to answer is, gee, where have recent alum gone? from the marketing program. So I'm gonna click on alumni and I'm gonna to toggle over here to next. So you can see the top employers overall of uh, Point Park grads are, well, these are students mostly probably, uh, but PNC, UPMC, BNY Mellon, very similar to, uh, to uh, Slippery Rock, obviously. And then, but let's toggle over to the next and let's go down to marketing. Is marketing here? There's business commerce. Is your program called something different? It's there. Oh. We passed it up. Did I? Yep. No, oh, here we go. 614. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. So you have 614 either students or alum who have built a LinkedIn profile. We can now see that those folks are currently working mostly at PNC. So where should you be looking for a job if you want to stay down there in a Bergen at PNC, BNY, Point Park, uh, Highmark, UPMC, and so on. Oh, gee, I'm really interested in uh, PNC. That's fantastic. By the way, what are they doing? Yeah, business development, sales, marketing, operations, sales. Typically, whether you go to Harvard, Grove City College, Slippery Rock, the number one job for marketing grads, entry level, folks, is sales. Now, don't think that's door to door. Don't think that's necessarily Cutco Knives, uh, although that's not a bad place if you're really good at direct selling. Um, that could be implantable devices. You know, something like Ethicon. J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson's Ethicon, they have entry-level developmental programs for high-achieving students coming out of marketing who want to sell a device, their devices, their surgical devices. So, um, so anyway, let's scroll down and doggone it, here they all are um, because I clicked, on, I clicked on PNC, did I not? So you can see who they are and you can start connecting. And I'll bet if you look close enough, you're going to find some folks that are talent acquisition specialists. Now, let's say you want to go work for a company, a specific company like Google, who will tell you if you don't have a 375, don't bother. There you go. And you want to search people. Where do you start? Well, you know, come on over here to your all filters. Come on down here to recruiters. There you go and search them out. There you go and start having a conversation. How do you have a conversation? By clicking connect and saying, I'm really excited about opportunities at Google. I would really like to join your network. Now, this kind of stuff is a lot like sales. You're going to have to connect with about 10 people before somebody will have a conversation with you. Just like when you're out selling something, you're going to have to have 10 conversations before somebody will actually give you an, an, uh, an appointment. And then maybe one in every 
100 are actually going to buy your product. Yeah, it's a, it's a grueling process. Same here, but you can't get discouraged because not everybody is joining LinkedIn uh, in for the same reasons. They should be joining LinkedIn so that they'd be equally willing to help you as they hope you are to uh, help them. So there's a couple of quick things there. And now let's get some meat and potatoes here because we want to get you off and, and, and uh, exploring a couple of questions here. Some mistakes that I have seen from uh, from students is first of all not having a LinkedIn account that's so important and have a crisp one please please have your career office review that or get with a career office if you're an alum have a, your career office look over your LinkedIn there's nothing wrong I work with plenty of 40 and 50 year old alum who come back and have their LinkedIn polished happens all the time so please have it polished make sure you have an about section that is your brand about is not by the way, if you read down here, you'll see I went to this school and I went to that school and I work here. That's not what about is. About is your brand. It's your personal brand. What are your top unique skills? What do you value in a day's work? Um, what would other people say about you? And what are words you want to be remembered by? Subway Eat Fresh. We all know that brand, right? You need to have a brand. So when they ask you, why should I hire you? Or you're in that elevator with the CEO by, by happenstance of, of uh, PPG, you can express your brand very quickly and not generically or mechanically. A lot of people have LinkedIn accounts. A lot of people don't know how to use them. I just showed you maybe a couple of ways that you didn't know how to use them. Get with a career professional or somebody who really knows LinkedIn well. Not understanding the value of networking. Well, we need people. You're networking, you're not working. Uh, and also you're connecting and you're growing or you're stagnant. You're building your EV. Students, if you stop, commencement means something. It means you're commencing something new. You can't go into a company and just stagnate. You have to build your EV, your employable value. Because if you don't continue learning, everybody else is learning and your EV erodes to the point where you're not valuable to your employer, where you get that from your network and connection. Please stay connected to AMA. I tell our safety students, stay connected to the American Society of Safety Professionals. I was an industrial hygienist. These safety guys come in here with two weeks left before internship and say, I don't have one. I can pick up the phone and make a call for them because I've maintained my connections from ASSP and from the American Industrial Hygiene Association. Stay connected. Great places to do that. Coming with too many restrictions. Well, I, I, I'll meet him for an informational interview, but I can't do it on this date and I can't do it on that date. Oh, I don't, oh, I can't network there because I don't want to live in that city. How do you know? Have you ever been to that city? Come on, we got to be open. You know, Pittsburgh represented, are you ready for this? In the last 365 days, according to Labor Insight, my Labor Insight statistics, Pittsburgh represented 0.8% of the US job market for all jobs posted in the US for bachelor's degree holders. That means that 99.2% of all bachelor's degree level jobs were not in Pittsburgh. So this idea why I just want to stay around here. Why are you fishing in this pond when you should be fishing in this pond? You should be networking nationwide. The number one restricting factor in your career is the unwillingness to go anywhere, meet everyone, and start at any level. Be willing to go anywhere. Be willing to meet everyone. Be willing to do anything because only 27% of Americans work in a job related to what they studied. Sorry about the career soapbox, but I got to tell you, these, this is all these stats and the truth. Waiting too long, you know, I'm going to start connecting, but I'm graduating in a week. I mean, really, everything's based on relationships. All right. So go ahead and type in the chat the answer to this question. You're a recruiter. Would you rather hire somebody who came to you as a senior at a job fair or somebody who came to you as a freshman and came back every year to shake your hand? Who would you rather hire? Go on, type it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Come on. Would you hire the senior or the freshman? As long as they've obviously developed but, uh, over those four years. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah right. So the, the freshman who came back four years late every year. Why? Because we like to talk to people we know. We like to turn to people we know. And we darn well better hire people we know so we know what we're getting. Why? That's why hiring out of internships is so great. Because I actually get to try you out for a while, you know? Don't let your connections erode. You've got to keep those connections up. That's your emergency 10 as well as your advisory uh, advisory board. Okay, so four questions I'd like you to talk about a little bit in your, uh, in your breakouts, and uh, I'm happy to put them in the chat again. So first of all, self-knowledge is critical. How do you know what to say yes to if you don't know yourself? You know, happenstance might present an opportunity to you tomorrow. 
How do you know if that's the right path if you haven't thought about your goals and what you're made of, what's your fabric, what inherent fabric, what identity do you actually bring? We're not a society that's particularly reflective in journals. I do, but a lot of people don't because we're going to the phone and then we're going to midterms and then we're going to finals, then we're going to parties. It's like at some point we got to figure out who the heck we are and where we're driving this ship. So I want you to think about two goals. Think now, think about two goals that you have in the next year. Jot them down. Go on, go on, jot them down. And uh, do, do you offer something that you want to learn, something you want to do, a major achievement that you'd like to achieve, a connection that you would like to make? So that would be the first thing. All right, let's talk about the next one. We look at connecting in terms of what people can do for us, right? <laughs> I need a job. I'm going to connect with talent acquisition specialists. They can hire me. But in reality, networking is really about what I can do for you. Think about two things that you could offer to someone, expertise, a skill, a talent. Maybe you could teach someone to fly fish. I don't know. A personal contact, somebody really high up, really powerful, really cool you can connect them with, or in a knowledge that you could share with them, something you could teach them. Could you sell them something that would make their life easier? Think about that because you're going to be talking about these things. Last, second, second to last. But I'm not good at small talk. Uh, thus, ambiverts and, int and introverts have problems with that. I don't see the point of it. Okay. What is something someone had to offer that interested you? Because people are going to share in, in the order I've given you things they have to offer. Ask them to tell you more and then listen to the answer. As you listen, everyone think about one more question that comes to mind based upon what they said. So networking is a lot about listening in this, in this environment. Uh, actually, there we go. And can you offer a solution? What is a goal someone wanted to reach? Can you help them? And what can you offer? Offer some advice, at, le at least. We've got some great professionals in the room, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll stop sharing, but I'm going to, oh, that's, there you go. That's me. If you need to connect with me, the SRU students know. I know I, I really wanted to get bald career guy at SRU. They won't do it. I don't think I haven't tried, uh, but I am on Twitter at bald career guy. And uh, so I'll stop sharing, hand that back to Doreen. In the meantime, I'm going to put those questions back in the chat. When you break, get into your breakout groups, they may not be there anymore. But Doreen, you may be able to share those into, um, into those breakout groups. But for now, as far as audio, I'll hand that back to you. And I'm going to try to grab those questions and paste them in there too. Thank you. Yeah, if you can get the questions into the chat, I can share them into the breakout rooms. And before you leave, I just want to ask again, any other questions, throw them into the chat. We did get one question in the chat about photographs. When you were showing the LinkedIn profiles, what do you recommend as far as a LinkedIn photograph? Is there a particular place someone should get them done, a particular style? What are you looking for? At John Rindy Photography. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, no, no. Always hey, selling. What a do voice I have a career if this career thing doesn't. Thank like you that. very much. I'm going to put on my DJ voice. Uh, don't forget, I'm a musician, so you got to be good on a microphone. Okay, what, uh, this is rhetorical, no one has to answer this, and uh, what will you look like the first day on the job? Uh, pardon how I phrase this, people get offended when I say it this way, please don't get offended. If they buy you, what are they getting? So for example, I say to my safety students, our safety, we have a big safety management program. Um, I say, listen, uh, come over here. I looked at your LinkedIn profile, you got a picture of you driving and taking a selfie and you're a safety major. Do we see any incongruities here? Yeah. Or the, or the little picture of me in the bathroom with my underwear on the floor. Not good, right? Oh, I, my favorite is I'm going to be creative. I'm going to turn it 45 degrees and take it. Now that shows I'm creative. Yeah, yeah. No, no. What are you going to look like? So if you're an accounting student, I want you to bring up a spreadsheet on this screen. And I've done this in my office. A spreadsheet here, a spreadsheet here. I want you to turn around, face the camera, lean in and smile because that's what you're going to be looking like at work. You'll be in front of those spreadsheets a lot. So what are, what are you going to look like? If you're in safety, yeah, a pair of Dickies and a hard hat. Great. Makes perfect sense. What are you going to look like? And then, of course, a nice banner image behind it if you choose to use a banner image that represents something that interests you or a passion you have. But um, yeah, so there you go. And I did write an article. If you just Google Rindy, LinkedIn photo faux pas, feel free to read that. And it tells you the do's and don'ts, at least from my perspective. Thank you for that question. That's a good one. Well, let's see. It looks like we have a, a comment that iPhone portrait mode is great on the newer models. Okay. 
there you go. Uh, for you students going to career fairs, that's a great day to take your shot. I know we usually have alumni engagement. We'll take your shot at a, at a LinkedIn booth. So, and if you go to Westpac, although it's probably going to be virtual again in the spring. Oh, no, no. This time Westpac is going to offer an in-person at Monroeville one day and the next day virtual or vice versa. I just learned that yesterday. Um, Silver Rock students, we're going to try a spring career fair. We don't usually do one, but we're going to try it on the 31st of March. So you'll be able to take a LinkedIn headshot that day if you want to. And my AMA um, leaders should be thinking about maybe we could do something like that and offer it as a service in the school. Fundraiser, of fundraiser. Great ideas. All right. Well, I know you have another engagement to get to. A networking but, engagement, of course. Yeah. Of all things, perfect timing. So this has been just fantastic. Slippery Rock students, you really have a, an amazing resource in Dr. Rindy. And Dr. Rindy, thank you for sharing your amazing self with us so that we can uh, spread the word about networking, how critical it is. And I don't think any one of us will forget networking or not working as a phrase. So that's probably uh, going to be repeated very regularly in our classrooms. <laughs> That's good to hear. Let me give you one more for the students. For the rest of your career, you sign up, you dress up, you show up, and you follow up. The four ups, sign up, dress up, show up, follow up. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we are at our hour mark today, and so we will be respectful of your time. Thank you all so much for joining in today. I hope this session was helpful to you and that you will be able to refer back to the advice that Dr. Rindy provided and the steps and the questions that he shared to benefit you as you move forward in your career journey. This is being recorded, so we will have a recording of the session, particularly Dr. Rindy's presentation piece available to you through the AMA Pittsburgh YouTube channel. So please feel free to go to that channel to get more information. I will share my screen just one more time as we wrap up today, we so appreciate uh, you being with us. And I just want to make sure that I remind you that this session and our collegiate conversations for the fall were sponsored by the Roland School of Business at Point Park University. And we're so glad that we had Slippery Rock represented in the session today with Dr. Rindy, students and faculty. So thank you so much for being with us today. Look for collegiate conversations to return in the spring and also go to amapittsburgh.org where you can learn more about upcoming events, including a soon to be announced holiday meetup. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.